we will be looking at variations in population. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to define variation. You should be able to describe different types of variation. You should be able to distinguish between continuous and discontinuous variation. You should also be able to discuss the applications of variation in different fields. And you should be able to discuss the causes of variation. As biology students, I don't know if you have wondered why do individuals of the same species vary quite a lot? Why is it that we have a lot of variants? A lot of varieties of individuals? Think back some of the differences between people. Why do you see that Mr. A and Mr. B, they don't look alike, even though that they are of the same species? Why do you even look as you do? Why is it that you and your friend, you are, you, you are not the same? You didn't look alike. But the way you behave, the way you, are, you appear, everything is quite different. What about millions of different plants and animals over the world? Why do they even differ in their appearance, in their mode of life, in their behavior, even how they live? Why all these variations? At least at the end of this lesson, these questions should, you should be able to answer them. You should be able to find reason why these variants occur. What is variation? The observable differences that occur between individuals of the same species. Those differences that one can be able to identify when you are being compared with someone else. Those observable differences are what we call variation. So the individuals that are involved here, we call them variants. We have two types of variation. Morphological variations and physiological variations. When we talk about morphological variations, we are talking about the noticeable physical appearance of individuals of the same species. Like as in our human beings, if we talk about a morphological variation in animals, we'll be talking about the height of the body, or we'll be talking about the various shape of different parts of the body. But the shape of the head, uh, the shape of the eyes, the shape of the mouth, the nose, if it's pointed or not. Eh? You talk about the, the jaw, you talk about the shape of the ears, even the shape of the legs. These things are morphological variation. You, you fingerprints are there. What are the, the different contours that are found in fingerprints? They are part of the morphological variation. Or you talk about the size of different parts of the body. Maybe the size of the hair. Is it big head? Is it medium hair? Is it small head? Talk about the size of the eye. Is the eye bulky? Huh? Different size of different of, of different individuals based on their eyes. You talk about the size of the hand. There are people that their hand is so big that if they grab you with their hand, you will seek for help. You talk about the neck. Those that have broad neck. So these things are morphological variations. Even talk about color here. Color is also a morphological variations. Those that are fair, those that are dark, just like me. Uh, you see different color that, that different individuals is bit. You talk about weight of individuals. Uh, you see different weight that occurs. Every individual has different weight. And you, within your class, you know that people or everyone has this on her own weight. There are a lot of variations when it comes to weight. This is an example of morphological variation. So if we talk about plants now, what are the morphological variations that we can identify in plants? You can talk about the height of the plant. You know, not all plants are tall. Some of them, even though they are of the same species, you see that some of them will be quite tall, while some of them will not be that tall. We can even talk about different shapes of the plant. Maybe the shape of the roots, shape of the leaves, fruit shapes. Uh, you talk about shape of the flowers. Bring out a typical orange, you see that or an orange of the same species can vary based on each shape, the shape of the fruit. Talk about different size of the plant, of the plant. Well, when we talk about either green leaves, fruit flowers, we talk about their sizes. 
Even the colors. What are their colors? You see that plant can also vary but based on either green or white or brown leaves, even their flowers, even their stems and roots. Their colors vary too. So all these noticeable appearances of individuals of the same species are what we call morphological variation. In some textbooks, we can see it, they will tag it as physical variation. So these are what we call morphological variation. The second one, which is physiological variations, are the variations or differences that occur in individuals of the same species that is being determined by how their body reacts to environmental conditions. In, 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 a, in a short form, we can say that it is how organisms or living things of the same species react to the functioning of the body. Here we can see behavior as one of its examples. Different individuals react in, to, to different conditions in different ways. Because here we have hormones that are being inherited, which controls these things. Something like the tyrosine, adrenaline, sex hormone. These are some of the hormones that, that can affect behavior. So even though that these things are being inherited patterns, but these hormones controls them. These hormones try to reinforce them. So they may be grouped, you see individuals may be grouped, either they are aggressive or non-aggressive over, over behavior, certain behaviors. Either we say that someone is brave or someone is timid. Either we say that someone is always sexually excited or that that person is calm. Either we say that someone is caring or the person is uncaring. Either we say that someone is stupid or that the person is intelligent. These are physiological variations. Variations of the, the, the one that it pertains to behavior. So after behavior, we can talk about something like ability to roll tongue. Individuals that have the ability to roll, bring out their tongue and roll it, push it out. It, it, it is a physiological variation because not in all individuals can do this. And it has to do with how our body system functions. The ability to test PTC, phenylthiocarbamide, the ability to test this. Some people cannot be able to test this chemical. Some people, we call them testers, while others we call them non-testers. People that if they, if they test it, it will be testless. Why others cannot test it at all. Another example of physiological variation is ability to close one eye and keep the other open. A lot of people can be able to close one of their eyes and leave the other open. But, but this, it varies. So it's, it's, it's the way an individual body's function is a physiological variation. We have blood groups, differences in blood group. The ABO blood group is another example of physiological variation. So these are different examples of physiological variation, which are dependent on the way the, function, uh, the body system functions. And what are the causes of variation? But before we go that, let's look at the different pictures of the fingerprint. The fingerprint, we, if you look at the fingerprint, we will see that there is a contour, a contour that is being displayed on the fingerprint. This contour controls Every individual has its own specific contour. These bars that keep on going in between them, you see sweat pores. In between each of these small lines, you see its sweat pores. Every individual has its own fingerprint, and it is unique. The fingerprint, we have hole, we have loop, we have act. In some, in, in some places, you can have beyond this, you can have central pocket loop. When loops are being classified, you can see accidental loop. You can even see something like double loop. So it, 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 we have about six different modes of fingerprint. So it, you, although that something, if you if you can cite something like the domain biology, you can see that it, it, we have fingerprints of seven different types. When you see something like double loop, when this loop is being made into two, this we join here, and that one we join at this way. Every individual has its own fingerprint. It is a physiological variation. 
Now, what are the differences between continuous variation and discontinuous variation? In a continuous variation, there is an intermediate trait. In a continuous variation, there is an intermediate trait, which means that it's a, a transition, a transition between two extreme factors, where you can see if it's tall, we see short or tall based on height. If we talk about height, we can see tall or short. In between, there is an intermediate. In between tall and short, you can see an average height there. But in this continuous variation, there is no intermediate. Either you have it or you don't have it. So if we say that someone is a tester of PTs, either the person can, has the ability to test it or the person doesn't have the ability to test it. It's a non-tester. So, but continuous variation is being affected by environmental factors. Continuous variation it can be affected by environmental factors. How? Someone that is intelligent, an intelligent person can be affected by environment. Environment can make the person, the school that person attends, the, uh, the way the person lives, the type of friend that person has can affect his IQ. Someone that is not intelligent or the way can also be helped by his, his or her environment. The environment can help to equip the person, to reinforce the person, to motivate the person to study. Whereby you see such person doing better, even though that naturally the person lacks that trait of intelligence. But here, in this continuous variation, it's not affected by environmental factors. It's controlled by many genes. Continuous variation is controlled by many genes or polygenes. You have multiple subgenes that controls this. For example, when we talk about height, we have about five pairs of genes that controls height. But here we have only two, one or two major genes. Either you have the gene for, for ability to test, or you don't have the gene of, on, in a, of, of, of a non-testing individual. Now, our characteristics are usually quantitative. They can be measured. Yeah, you can measure how, how tall someone is. You can measure the weight of someone. But here you can't be able to measure that. This is being caused by codominance of genes. We, last week we treated codominance of genes. When you see that in codominance of genes, you see two traits dominating. Where you see intermediate genes coming in. But here we have complete dominance showing up. It's caused by, it's followed by normal distribution curve. Why here? There's nothing like a, a normal distribution curve. Everything is evenly is not evenly distributed. Now let's look at the causes of variations. What are the causes of variation? There are two major causes of variation: the gene and the environment. Now, the genetic differences oh, we are those traits that we inherit from our parents, either from the mother or from the father. They are the things that we differ us from the, from our from other people. And the gene is being affected when mutation occurs, when this sudden change happens to the gene, it will make an individual to look different from others. So genetic differences, things that happen to the locus of a gene, will affect how an organism looks like. Why we have environment, environment can influence the individual, just as I explained earlier, with using someone who is intelligent and that who is not intelligent, and even someone who is fair in color, Reflection of light, light radiations will always affect the skin color of that person. So environment has a lot of role to play on how an individual looks like. Application of variation. What are the ways that we can apply variation? We can apply variation in crime detection. We can apply variation in agriculture. We can apply variation in blood transfusion. We can also apply variation in we can also apply variation in determination of paternity. These are different ways that we can apply variation. In your assignment, you'll be able to describe how these four ways can be used in applic for application of variation. See you next week when we discuss in details about blood groups, everything that concerns with blood, the resus factor, and other ones. Thank you, and see you next time.